Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's our pleasure to have you with us uh, today. I think that uh, uh, this uh, session is a little bit late. Uh, actually, we are not the cause or the reason of this. Uh, the population problem is uh, one of the uh, biggest problems that, uh, that Egypt faced uh, as a decision maker for the decision maker, for the, for the people, for the citizens, for the government, for the state, this uh, problem, it is not a new problem, uh, although there are some s previous steps uh, through the uh, previous, uh, the past uh, 20 years, but I think after the year 2011, uh, the problem uh, was uh, enlarged, and I think that finally it's considered to be one of the main priorities for the state in order to face uh, this problem in a better way. Uh, for sure, in the previous uh, period of time, there were other priorities concerning the uh, institutional uh, reform and the legislation reform. And in my own personal point of view, I don't think that uh, the population problem wasn't of the priorities in the uh, past four or five years, but now it is on the top of the priorities. And from here, the Egyptian Center for the Economic Studies start dealing with this uh, problem uh, from a scientific uh, point of view, and I think that the conference of today is opening the door for uh, the discussion uh, to find better solutions, better policies to be adopted, and at the same time to know the uh, strategy of uh, the state and uh, the implementation uh, 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 policies that uh, the government is adopting in order to uh, combat the uh, popula population uh, problem. Um, actually, the population problem is considered if uh, we uh, 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 use this uh, problem uh, to be an advantage so Egypt can be uh, compete with this, and I think that this is a fine line uh, between, uh, different sh between considering this uh, um, issue as a problem or as, a dis uh, or as an advantage. I think that today it's a good opportunity to open the door for discussions to find uh, better solutions. Dr. Amri, Dr. Amri, please, the floor is yours, and I would like to thank you all for uh, listening. Thank you very much. In the name of God, I'm very happy to be with you today. I'm Dr. Uh, Amr Hassan, and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, speak on behalf of Dr. Uh, Hala, the uh, Minister of uh, Health and Population. I would like to thank Dr. Hala for organizing such uh, an event. I think that looking at the population problem, we have to look at it from the economic uh, 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 perspective, and I think that the best project that uh, Egypt achieved was the uh, uh, family planning. If I say that every year I am increasing two and a half a million a, 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 a child, if we can minimize this rate, I think that this will be a kind of success if we manage to minimize this number. So I think that as a decision maker, if we try to uh, deliver such an idea to look at this uh, problem from an economic uh, perspective. We say that uh, now this uh, problem is on the top of our priorities uh, since last year when uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi was uh, at the Youth uh, Forum and he mentioned that terrorism and the population problem is considered to be uh, the two important problems that Egypt is, uh, is facing. So we said that if we are going to fight terrorism for 100 years, actually this will never uh, be a successful step without fighting and combating the population. Problem. Now we are, we are dealing with such a problem, uh, always we say that this is, we are not talking about the numbers, no, we are talking about many other uh, 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 perspectives, we are talking about every year we are increasing, every year the characteristics of the people are decreasing, we are living in the same area, and actually the difference between the, the people is increasing, and this uh, uh, creates a kind of dissatisfaction. Every year we are increasing half a mi uh, one and a half million. If we, if we look at Europe as a continent, 
Egypt is increasing like half of a whole continent. Uh, in the year 1950, we were increasing exactly the same like Italy. Now we are increasing uh, equal to more than five European countries, Italy, uh, England, and uh, Sweden. Every year, as if I'm giving birth to a new country without resources. Here, talking about the numbers. So, talking about the characteristics, so we have a problem concerning this. Normally, I would like to focus uh, not only on the numbers, but on the characteristics. Uh, in the year 2008, the rate, uh, the poverty rate was 20%. Uh, now it is 28%. So with the population, the uh, poverty rate is uh, increasing. We have four governorates in Egypt. The rate of uh, poverty uh, exceeds 50%. And we are looking at this as it is a domino. Poverty will uh, force you not to send your children to the school, and this will bring us poverty and literacy, we will say that the percentage of literacy in Egypt is 26 percent. Uh, the, the rate of literacy between women and girls is 36 percent. In some of the governorates, the literacy rate in Upper Egypt is more than 50 percent, like in Minya. So the boy and the girl that they did not join uh, the school, it means that these children are going to work in the streets. So this, it means children labor. Now we so you will find out that this, this child is like a, a, a resource for you, that this uh, uh, child or this boy is a wealth for you, and then you will take the decision to give birth to more children. And once you have a girl, you will start thinking of making her get married by the age of uh, 15 or 16, and then she will start giving birth when she's very young, and then her husband is going to find another wife in a healthy wife because actually women when they give birth uh, they lose their health and actually the men will look for another wife this is a point now we're going to talk about another point that we all live on about 7% of the whole area of Egypt. Our president was talking about building new communities, but we wanted to increase and increase the area from 20 or 30 years. We were about to think about this idea, building new communities. Then the difference between the people is increasing year after year, and this will cause a kind of unsatisfaction. People are not satisfied anymore. People are now thinking, why I'm not living like the people in England, like the Italian people? First of all, I have to say that the journey, the, the responsibility on my shoulder is very happy. Actually, in the year 1959, the population of Egypt were three million and a half. And the population in the year 1955, the population of Egypt was 23 million. And the population of England was 51 million, meaning that the population in England was double the population of Egypt. What happened in this few years, we actually double our, our numbers. So I'm increasing more than 75 million in England. They increased only 15 million people. So I have here the population five times the number in England. In Italy, in 1958, the population was 48 million. And in Egypt, we were 23 million after these years. Italy increased only 11 million, and here in Egypt we increased 75 million. So when we as citizens, when we think why we are not living like people abroad, it means that the responsibility I have on my shoulder is five times double the responsibility in other uh, country. Uh, normally, we are in, in an area that we are facing conflicts and wars, uh, starting from the uh, 1950. Uh, we passed through many wars, the war of 67 and 73. So, actually, part of my economic is uh, allocated to buy weapons, but the other countries, they are uh, living a luxurious, they, they use the money and the budget to build new communities and... and uh, and to provide services to their citizens. When I talk that the Egyptian government is required to build five times uh, hospitals, clinics, and schools, 
And for this reason, the characteristics are very, very low. So we would like to look at the population problem from the perspective, not only from the numbers, but uh, from the characteristics. And we have to look at these two perspectives parallel to each other in order to improve the characteristics. We are working now on improving the area that we are living on throughout the uh, uh, developing projects and building new communities. And I'm repeating again, it is the largest economic a project if Egypt adopted is uh, the project of family planning. If we look at this uh, project from this perspective, from this uh, vision, I think we can solve the problem if I will try to minimize and to decrease uh, the number of uh, children so the government or the state are going to understand why I am spending such money in the family planning project. This uh, will save lots of money in the future, so if we would like to change the vision, first of all, to put or to uh, 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 agree on this uh, concept. Uh, we were working on the strategy 2015-2030. Actually, I worked for the council two months ago, and I had a problem when I looked at the, str the strategy. When I looked at the executive plan 2015-2030, I wanted to, say, uh, to, to see are we, uh, are we uh, going uh, with the steps according to this strategy, and at that time I sat with uh, Mrs. Uh, Ger uh, Germain with the UFB, if he has any idea about this plan, and we found that the, the, the problem is we don't have any evaluation and any monitoring. We don't have any following up. This is the problem that we have in Egypt. When we set a strategy, when we set, when we set a plan or a policy, we don't have monitoring, we don't have uh, following up, we don't have controlling because if I do the monitoring, if I do the observation, if I do the following up, I will know if I will need to change some of the steps to be taken in the coming five years, for example. We have five pillars for this strategy. Strategy. The first one is uh, the, the family planning, the youth, the education, and the women. Throughout the fund, we provided for each pillar a consultant. So we have five consultants, and we have above them one uh, supervisor to follow up and to monitoring the plan starting uh, that is going to be implemented 2015 till 2030 to know where are the, to step on the weak points to see if there is a lack of, of resources, a lack of uh, finance. Uh, and we are going to issue a report by the end of this year if I manage to say what I did in the plan in the plan so I will know where I am stepping and, and, I can, and I can set a plan for the future to know what's going to happen in, in the future and I don't want to be lengthy. I would like to thank Dr. Abla for uh, such a conference. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, first, thank you, Dr. Abla, for uh, having you in FPA uh, this uh, morning. And it was really uh, wonderful to see all the, uh, all the friends and colleagues. I mean, Dr. Tarek Taufik, uh, Dr. Amr, uh, the you know, medical community, economic community. And uh, I, will, uh, I will say that because I want to make opening for uh, uh, my first point. I'm not going to uh, give you a speech. I mean, we already, uh, you know, by pure presence here, you know what the issue uh, is and uh, why it's so important to, to address the issue. But the population growth is uh, a multi-sectorial issue and requires multi-sectorial response. Uh, Dr. Amer already talked a bit about, uh, uh, you know, different, um, you know, complex nature of the population growth. Allow me to add a few more things. Uh, every year, 800,000 young people enter the job market. Every year, Government of Egypt uh, has a big task in front of them to find 800,000 more jobs. If you are looking at international standards, uh, Egypt has enough water for 50 million people, while the population of Egypt is uh, already over 97 million. International standards. Dr. Amr uh, picked a little bit on education. Just before the evaluation of Egyptian pound, uh, Egypt, you know, in population situation analysis conducted by UNFPA, we estimated that Egypt will need at least 18 billion Egyptian pounds just for the new schools. There is a big notion of talking about quality, while as a result of population growth, we are focusing, uh, you know, largely on the, on the quantity. If you are going to Upper Egypt, you will realize that, uh, uh, that uh, fertility is used as a labor incentive you will realize that uh, population growth is about social norms. 
It's about boy preference. And I can go on and on and on. So the family planning is a conditio sine qua non. It's prerequisites. That's we, where we start. But our response has to be more than family planning. It has to be really multi-sectoral response that will go to other sector. And uh, having this conference today is very encouraging because uh, some might ask, I mean, what economy has to do with that? So let me give you a few examples. You know, one of the very important measures that I want you to, uh, to think of are dependency ratio. Population below 14 and above 64. Egypt dependency ratio are almost 62%. 62%. So usually the, those who are still questioning if the population growth is uh, an issue and who will sometimes tell you more is the better, you know, don't have this figure in mind. They don't have a figure that 62% dependency ratio, that 62% of population is actually non-active population. So the better is not always, the more is not always uh, the better. Uh, you know, there are, different formulas and you know that's my takeaway for this first point you know i really you know i'm a trained physician and uh, i hate mathematic equation and wherever i go you know unfpa is all about uh, uh, population sexual reproductive health and rights and they ask me so like what is mathematic equation what kind of economic growth we need in order to overcome negative consequences of population growth so if you dig up into the uh, papers, into the research, you will find out in ideal condi conditions, it's a basically uh, population growth time two. So, but that means ideal condition. Ideal condition means uh, translate into the no unemployment, no informal employment, etc. So obviously we need to put strategy, as Dr. Armour uh, rightly said, the multi-sectoral strategy in order to address the population growth. So that's my first point. My second point, you know, when you talk, I already mentioned that family planning uh, is conditio sine qua non. You know, we have to focus on rights-based family planning programs. If you're looking, my second most popular question when the journalists, uh, you know, the experts ask me, what kind of example we can look at to replicate in Egypt. What other countries had a similar problem? And then they're taken back by surprise when I tell them, how about we decide and agree to look at Egypt? Not that long ago, you know, Egypt was championing rights-based family planning programs. And Egypt succeeded. Egypt managed to do something extraordinary. And I know that because back then I was a medical student and you know, I remember talking to my professor thinking that there is a mistake. You know, looking uh, how one country over there in North Africa managed to reduce fertility rates from 5.2 to 3.0 by purely putting a family planning in the core of human rights response and by uh, doing properly demand and supply, you know, do working in a parallel, hands in hands. So I tell them, let's look what we did, what was good that we did, and try to replicate, but also let's dig up and see what was missing to address the things that were missing the first time. So we found ourselves in 2019 talking about uh, uh, population growth and fertility rate uh, once again. So what was missing the first time is more notion and the focus on education. So when the new generation, you know, we are sometimes forgetting that young people, they don't stay always and forever young. They are future parents. So we do want and we need to invest in their education, in a productive health education, for, to prepare them for their role as a parents. And you know, I'm happy to see that uh, uh, there are initiatives, you know, that are now spread ahead by the government of Egypt in introducing premarital uh, education, in introducing and starting talking about uh, uh, comprehensive population education, reproductive health education. So all of that, you know, needs to be put in place in order to make sure that we don't find ourselves 20 years from now again talking about population growth. So. That was my second point. Yes, let's scale up a family planning program, but making sure that there are rights-based family planning programs because that's something that we did in the past. 
And my third point that uh, there is uh, uh, already, you know, the, uh, the, the alliance of support, there are a lot of supporters there. The, I'm representing here the United Nations, United Nations Population Fund, and uh, together with the uh, generous support of the European Union, of uh, government of Norway, government of uh, Italy, of the Switzerland, uh, of the Netherlands, uh, and then uh, we have a, a major program, we have a really big program that we put forward to support the government of Egypt in scaling up family planning program, in putting comprehensive strategies to address the issue of population growth. But we are not alone. There is equally big program by USAID, there is a big program by the World Bank, and we have to make sure that whatever we do is done in, uh, in a sink, hand in hand. And my final point, I want to ask you to not to forget uh, a few things. You know, quite often, you know, wherever you go, I mean, focus in one thing, you know, uh, results with the dropping uh, from the agenda something else. And uh, I want to here put the direct links between FGM, early marriage, and population growth. You know, quite often we are forgetting that there is direct correlation between the three. You know, in Egypt uh, uh, and everywhere else in the world where FGM is used as a mean to uh, uh, control address sexuality, you know, nine out of the ten uh, families who are exposing their daughters to FGM are also marrying them off earlier. That translates into longer reproductive period and that translates into more children. So if you are looking statistic, you know, if the girl is married at the age of the 17, that contributes to population growth at 17.6%. If the girl is married at the age of the uh, 15, it's a 36% contribution to the population growth. So when we are working on uh, uh, addressing the issue of population growth by putting rights-based family planning programs, but looking at the agriculture, by addressing education, by looking at you know, economic programs, by looking at the uh, comprehensive reform of education, we also have to make sure that uh, uh, we understand at the back of our mind that everything is interconnected. So uh, let's make sure that also as a part uh, because let me just go one step back. Quite often we are asked, but you know, FGM is different issue. Uh, early marriage is different issue. We're talking about family planning here. We are talking about population growth, but really not. Because uh, family genital mutilation and early marriage contribute significantly to the current rates of population growth. So we need to address them in a comprehensive uh, manner. So those are really quick, uh, uh, you know, points that I want you to take away with you. And then again, Dr. Abba, thank you for uh, for having us. And we are looking forward uh, uh, as a UN system, but also United Nations Population Fund as a member of that UN system, to work more closely with a different segment of Egyptian society, Egyptian government, uh, to uh, address the the issue and challenge in a comprehensive manner. Thank you.